Hi everyone, welcome to Vedantu Neat English. I'm Diksha Kaushalya, Chemistry Master Teacher. And bacha, very good morning to all of you. So guys, today we are going to revise all the concepts of chemistry class 12th in just one to two hours, okay? That will be a very short, crisp session. All the important points I have written for you, these are my handwritten notes. So guys, I'm not gonna waste your even one minute here. I know you all are very anxious, like ma'am, I don't know if I'll be able to, you know, solve all the questions or not. All the negative thoughts, you know, there is one solution to that. That one solution, everybody, in the chat box, that one solution. Yes, I know you all are feeling nervous right now. You know what? The one solution for that is, everyone, the one solution for that is be relaxed. Don't be anxious, right? Ma'am, how can we not be anxious? We are feeling very anxious. We are feeling very nervous. You know what? All the things, every exam, we say exam is important for you, but exam is not your whole life. You are anxious because you don't know what is, what is going to be the result. Now, you know what? Two things matters. First thing is your hard work, right? You have given your 100%, right? You have given your 100%, yes? Yes. Now, second thing that matters is how you are dealing with the stress. Every system, this education system wants to teach us these two things. That is hard work and second thing is how to deal under stress, how to deal under pressure. If you know these two things now, you will survive in life. You will be able to handle every situation and this is just another exam which will make you handle pressure, pressure and which will make you which will make you handle all the difficulties in life right so first thing i know you have done your 100% now the second thing is revise this and then relax yourself relax eat something and you know take a walk and anything and just relax and give your exam that's it express yourself in the exam that's it Okay, so are we all ready for the last minute revision? Are we all ready for the last minute revision? Yes. Okay, so let us start the last minute revision. Okay, so firstly, Bacha, starting with, I'm not going to waste you even one minute here. Okay, so let's not talk now. Let's focus on our last minute revision, right? Okay, so firstly, these are the formulas. This is mole fraction, that is number of moles of that component divided by total, total number of components and the mole fraction of all the components is equals to unity. Now, next is molarity. Molarity is equals to number of moles of solute divided by volume of solution in liquid. Liters. The units here are liters, not milliliters. Okay, and the volume is of solution. Okay, molarity is number of moles of solute divided by mass of solvent. Here we are taking mass and that too of the solvent that is in kilograms. Okay, not in grams, this is in kilograms. So these two, these two formulas are very important for your solution chapter colligative properties okay next is henry's law now what is henry's law p is equals to kh mole fraction this is henry's constant this is a mole fraction and this is the partial pressure right okay so henry's law also states that pressure is in directly proportional to the solubility factor so henry's law has lots of application to it because of uh, more is the pressure more is the solubility so here we have four application first is cold drinks okay when we dissolve carbon dioxide under high pressure that is the henry's law application we dissolve carbon dioxide under high pressure so that the solubility of gases increase in that solution Next is scuba diving. Know about what happens to scuba divers? They go inside, they go inside the sea. Inside the sea, pressure is very low. So the pressure is very high. So the solubility is very high. So the solubility is very high. Now when they come out of the sea, then pressure decreases, solubility decreases. Now what is going to happen? Pressure decreases, solubility decreases, right? This leads to a thing that is called bends, okay? That is called bends. To avoid this situation, their tanks is filled with helium and nitrogen. 
okay next is anoxia what is anoxia when we go at high altitude their pressure is low at high altitude pressure is low so the solubility is low that makes it very difficult for us to inhale that is the condition of anoxia next is fishes in cold water now why fishes survive in cold water why they prefer cold water the reason is health is low why because as the temperature is low so the temperature is low that means the solubility is very high okay temperature is low this means solubility is high right then we are talking about gases here right so uh, fishes needs oxygen to inhale right so oxygen is dissolved in the cold water more easily as compared to the hot water because lower the temperature higher is the solubility right okay that is why fishes feel easy to inhale in cold water next is the solubility here these are the a relationship of solubility first is solids and liquids so if you are dissolving solid and liquid what will happen as a solid is incompressible so applying the pressure or increasing or decreasing the pressure no issues with that okay there is no effect to that next is increasing the temperature so we know temperature has a inverse relation with solubility in case of exothermic reaction in case of endothermic reaction it has a direct relation temperature increases solubility increases right next is gases and solid that is where this henry loy based upon right okay so gases and liquid when we increase the pressure you are applying the pressure okay this is the thing do you have this uh, beaker filled with gas you are applying the pressure here you are applying the pressure that means the molecules are actually getting so more solubility here the molecules are nearer to each other right that is why solubility increases here so if you are increasing the solubility that uh, sorry if you are increasing the temperature that means now kinetic energy is more so the solubility decreases here right okay so this is the relation of solubility in case of gases right next we have four formulas for colligative properties we have four colligative properties that are directly to number of um, number of moles of solute or you can say number of particles of solute that is more specific right okay next is relative lowering what happens here in colligative property vapor pressure vapor pressure decreases boiling point increases freezing point decreases okay so we have four colligative properties in total first is relative lowering in vapor pressure this is the p not minus p by p not this is lowering in vapor pressure this whole term is called relative lowering in vapor pressure that is directly proportional to number mole fraction of solute okay by 2 i am representing solute by 1 i am representing solvent that is directly proportional to mole fraction okay mole fraction of solute right next we are talking about elevation of boiling point boiling point is increasing when we are adding non volatile solute here right okay here in this case kb is the ebioscopic constant or molar elevation constant here right this is also called ebioscopic constant and this m is the molality now elevation in boiling point and depression in freezing point that depends on the molality okay now again this is delta tf is equals to kf this is called cryoscopic constant this is cryoscopic constant or molar depression constant right m is the molality here right formulas are exactly the same next is yeah one more thing here here delta t is equals to t not f minus tf and delta tb is equals to tb minus t not b next we have osmotic pressure for osmotic pressure pi is equals to crt here we have molarity right here we have molarity not molality here we have molarity okay this is equals to pi is equals to number of moles by volume rt right understood this yes perfect next bachcha everyone here next we have if we are adding if there is dissociation or there is association right in that case we will add another factor that is bond hoff factor here bond hoff factor will be included in the equation where there is number of particles that means here i'll apply bond hoff factor in mole fraction here in case of molarity 
here in case of that will be multiplied by molality this will be multiplied by molarity that means want of factor will be multiplied by concentration terms okay now ma'am how to calculate want of factor so there are few formulas to calculate want of factor now bacha this is the definition of want of factor that is observed colligative property divided by calculated colligative property number of particles after association or dissociation by number of particles before normal molecular mass by abnormal molecular mass right these are the definitions now how do we calculate that so in case of dissociation everybody i is always greater than 1 for example mgcl to uh, nacl here i is always greater than 1 right so in that case uh, this is equals to alpha is equals to alpha is degree of dissociation is equals to i minus 1 n minus 1 n is what the number of particles that it gets dissociated into right nacl has n is equals to 2 mgcl has n is equals to 3 okay like that now degree of association that is alpha is equals to when we are associating for example acetic acid is forming dimer here right okay that is alpha is equals to i minus 1 divided by n 1 minus n minus 1 here i is always less than 1 and so this okay bachcha any problem till now any problem yes sorted okay now <clears throat> please bear with my voice because it's already gone right okay now these are the few examples here everyone these are the few examples positive deviation you have these examples negative deviation you have these examples now ma'am in positive deviation what happens a p interactions here are less as compared to a a p b interaction this is the trick to remember the examples here and here in this case a b interactions here in this case a b interactions are more than as compared to a a and b b interactions right okay so now let us see what is positive and what is negative deviation okay ma'am we have done the examples okay now see this carefully now what is raoult's law okay what is raoult's law raoult's law is nothing that is pt is equals to this is direct formula usually raoult's law states that partial pressure of uh, a is equals to partial pressure of any component is equals to its pure state its vapor pressure in pure state multiplied by the mole fraction okay this is the raoult's law now we when we add the total pressure of a and b when we are mixing component a and b the total pressure is equals to pressure of a plus pressure of b now we are converting that into mole fraction of just one thing so how will we write it mole fraction bracket p not minus p not plus p not okay if you want to calculate in terms of a just write it a a b b if you want to calculate in terms of b just write b b a a yes very simple thing to uh, learn this formula right next is osmosis now what is osmosis osmosis is the movement of solvent particles from high concentration to lower concentration if you are applying external pressure to stop this that is called osmotic pressure and that is equals to and that osmotic pressure is equals to crd that is the fourth colligative property right if you are applying external pressure more than the internal pressure in that case we are not only stopping that osmosis we are reversing that okay this is used in desalination of the water right okay here the movement of solvent particles will be from low concentration to high concentration right okay now next thing is electrochemical cell okay electrochemical electrochemistry first chapter is completed here okay first chapter we have completed the first chapter here we have completed the first chapter here before that i'll just add on one thing here i'll just add on one thing here bachcha one thing is left that is wait 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 one thing is left here that is ideal this is ideal uh, this is uh, positive this is positive and this is negative division and this is negative deviation just one thing is left here i am going to write it here here in this case pt is greater than pa plus pb partial pressure increases here here pt is less than pa plus pb here we have delta v mixing and delta h mixing these two are greater than 0 here we have delta h mixing and delta v mixing 
that is uh, less than zero. Okay, for negative division. Here we have in both the cases in ideal in non-ideal any kind of solution delta s is always uh, greater than zero and delta g is always less than zero. Delta s is always greater than zero. Delta g is always less than zero. This happens with any ideal, non-ideal, any kind of solution. Right? Okay. Now, next thing I think we have uh, done almost everything. Here A, B interactions are less than A, A and B, B interactions. Here A, B interactions are more than A, A and B, B interactions. That's it. If you know these things, you will be able to solve the answer and also know the uh, uh, examples. Okay, examples are also very important for this. Now, next thing is electrochemical cell. Let us talk about electrochemistry. You have two kind of cell. First is electrochemical, second is electrolytic cell. Okay, electrochemical cell is where chemical energy is getting converted to electrical, here electrical to chemical. This is a spontaneous cell, that is why delta G is negative. This is non-spontaneous cell, delta G is greater than, this is positive. Right, now this is a very important, very important that usually students mark this wrong. Very important thing here that anode here is negative, cathode here is positive. How do we learn this? LOAN, that is loss of electron oxidation anode. Anode is a negative electron. Here things are opposite, okay. Here anode is a positive electrode and cathode is a negative electrode. Right, this is like electrolysis of NaCl, molten NaCl, electrolysis of copper sulfate solution, electrolysis of NaCl, right, all these things. Right, next we have Daniel cell. Next we have Daniel cell, that is an electrochemical cell, right. This is also galvanic cell, this is also called galvanic cell, voltaic cell, all these things. Right, okay. Now, here in this case, we take one, two things here. This is a beaker, okay. This is a beaker, I'll just strike it here. As this is just for revision, right? I am not explaining it that much in detail. There will be a salt bridge here. Okay, there will be a salt bridge here. This is oxidation half cell, this is reduction half cell. In oxidation half cell, we have taken zinc here. Zinc is going to lose electron at an node and cathode, that is reduction half cell. Here copper is going to gain the electron. So zinc is going to have a zinc is zinc electron is going to be thin here. With time, it is going to be thin, and copper electrode is going to be thin thick with time right okay uh, we have done this now what is the flow of electron that is from oxidation to reduction half cell okay oxidation half cell is always on the left side how to remember this rr that is r for reduction r for right side reduction is always on the right side okay and reduction is for the cathode right okay yes electrons electrons flow anode anode to cathode that is zinc to copper now current is opposite to the electron we have done this in physics now next question that they can ask you if we apply the they're talking about Daniel cell if you are applying voltage that is more than 1.1 volt in that case electrons will have the reversal flow here earlier they were flowing from zinc to copper now they will flow from copper to zinc now if you are applying voltage that is external voltage is less than this nothing will happen the current is good the electrons will go as they were going before okay that is zinc to copper the original flow here now if the external voltage is exactly equal to 1.1 volt in that case cell is going to stop here right okay next question that is how to represent it in representation always remember this is oxidation half cell reduction okay but this is loan you can say loss of electron this is loss of electron or you can say left side this is oxidation this is anode and this is negative electron negative electron okay these things are very important for you, right? Left side is uh, oxidation, that is a note. Here you will have loss of electron, right? And now, we will uh, make one reactivity series here, right? Uh, I have done the reactivity series part also. Now, bacha, reactivity series, what you will see, more is the reduction potential. That thing wants to get reduced here. That means it will oxidize the other thing. That means the oxidizing power is very high. And the reducing power of other thing will be very low. Okay. So here, more is the reduction potential. More is the oxidizing power and less is the reducing power here. <coughs> 
नेक्स्ट इज हाउ टू कैलकुलेट ई नॉट सेल हेयर ई नॉट सेल इज इक्वल टू ई के थोड दिस ई के थोड माइनस ई नोट नाउ दिस के थोड एंड एनोट बोथ आर द रिडक्शन पोटेंशियल नॉट द ऑक्सीडेशन पोटेंशियल नाउ मैम हाउ डू वी नो दैट दिस इज अ रिडक्शन पोटेंशियल और एन ऑक्सीडेशन पोटेंशियल इफ यू हैव ई ए पॉजिटिव टू ए दिस इज योर रिडक्शन पोटेंशियल ओके दिस इज गेन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन इफ यू हैव ई ए टू ए प्लस दिस इज लॉस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन दिस इज ऑक्सीडेशन पोटेंशियल एंड दे आर ऑलवेज जस्ट डिफरेंस ऑफ नेगेटिव साइन हेयर दैट्स इट ओके सो ऑलवेज केयरफुली सी इफ यू आर गिवन रिडक्शन पोटेंशियल और ऑक्सीडेशन पोटेंशियल हेयर यू नीड टू पुट रिडक्शन पोटेंशियल नॉट ऑक्सीडेशन पोटेंशियल राइट ओके वी आर डीलिंग विद रिडक्शन पोटेंशियल हेयर राइट नेक्स्ट थिंग दैट वी हैव इज नर्स इक्वेशन राइट यू स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दे विल डेफिनेटली आस्क यू क्वेश्चन इज नॉट पॉसिबल टू मेक ए पेपर वेयर नर्स इक्वेशन इज नॉट अप्लाइड ओके वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नाउ दिस इज हाउ डू वी लर्न दिस नाउ दिस इज इन नेचुरल लॉ एंड दिस इज इन वेन वी आर एडिंग इफ यू आर एडिंग लॉ बेस टू टेन देर विल बी 2.303, right? That will be 2.303 RT NF law of base to 10 oxidation by reduction. Now the trick here is always here you will have on the above you will have oxidation and here you will have reduction. Oxidation by reduction. And now this whole thing is called QC. This whole thing is called reaction quotient, right? This is at a particular temperature that is 25 degrees Celsius. Now this is a very simple equation. E cell is equals to E not cell. E not cell how to calculate? E not ke thoda Minus e not a note minus point zero five nine one by n n is the number of electron gain and loss and always the number of electron gain and loss should be equal. Okay, for example, in cathode side, for example, at cathode side you have two electrons that are uh, gaining and at anode side you have three electrons that you gain. So n will be is equals to three into two that is six. Okay, always see number of electrons gain and loss should be equal here, right? Okay, next thing that we have, if at equilibrium we say, always remember one more thing, at equilibrium E cell is equals to zero, not E not cell. Okay, E cell is equals to zero, delta G is equals to zero, not delta G not. Okay, E cell and G is equals to zero. Okay, not the standard conditions. So here applying E cell is equals to zero here. And when equilibrium reaction quotient is equals to equilibrium constant, so here I'll write E not cell is equals to point zero five nine one by n log K C. This is also asked in your exam. Very very important. Everything that I am teaching you today is very important. Okay. So now next is Gibbs free energy, or they can also ask you one more thing here. That is maximum work. That is maximum work done. Okay, maximum work done or Gibbs free energy is equals to minus N F E naught cell E naught cell again E naught ke thod minus E naught ke thod. Now this is another equation that you can apply. Uh, this question is not usually asked. This question is asked in your exam. Okay, right? Okay. Next is for spontaneous reaction delta G is negative. If delta G is negative, apply it here. E will be positive. For non-spontaneous delta G is positive, and if delta G is positive, E will be negative here. Right? Next thing, bacha, we have conductance. <coughs> Any problem till now? Can I drink some water now? Can I drink some water? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Any problem? Okay. Now, see this. Now, bacha, see this very carefully. Now you have conductance related questions. Okay, for conductance you just need to remember this particular formula. Just remember this formula. That's it. No other formula. R is equals to rho L by A. R is the resistance. Rho is the resistivity. Okay, resistance is for whole mixture and resistivity is for one unit volume. Similarly, conductance is for whole solution and conductivity is for one unit volume. Okay, how do you represent conductance and conductivity? Everyone here, there is another formula. G G star is equals to kappa. I am writing one thing here. That is. I'm doing, no, no, that is written here. R is equals to resistance. Rho is resistivity. C is conductance. Okay, C is conductance, or you can also write it here. G is the conductance. I'm writing G is the conductance. That would be much easier for you. G is the conductance, right? G is the conductance, and 
Kappa. This is Kappa. Kappa is a conductivity. Now, ma'am, what is G star? What is G star? That is cell constant. That is cell constant. That is equals to L by E. Okay, that is equals to L by E. If you know these four terms, how to denote the symbols? And you just need to remember this formula and you remember this formula. Okay, things will be sorted. Now, for kappa, kappa is a conductivity for unit volume. Now, if you say what is molar conductivity, what is equivalent conductivity? That is for one normal and for one uh, one normal and one molar solution. Right? This is molar conductivity. This is equivalent conductivity. That is equals to kappa into thousand by molarity, kappa into thousand by normality. Now, here again, very important point that is kappa is equal to kappa must be in simon centimeter not in simon per uh, meter right if this is in per centimeter in that case it will be multiplied by thousand if it is in meters that will not be multiplied by a thousand okay see this very carefully usually they will give you this in kappa in simon centimeter only right okay now Next is limiting molar conductivity. Right? For strong electrolyte, if you want to see this graph, for strong electrolyte, the graph is like this. For strong electrolyte, the graph is like this. For weak electrolyte, the graph is like this. Okay, the graph is like this. Okay, that will be parallel to y-axis. Right? These are the two graphs which are very important for you. Next is for limiting molar conductivity, for strong electrolyte, it is very easy to calculate. But for weak electrolyte, we use Colloch law. Right? Here, if you can Calculating degree of dissociation, they will ask you this question. Okay, if they are asking something about molar conductivity, they will ask you find out the degree of dissociation. Alpha is equals to limiting molar conduct. No, that is molar conductivity at concentration C at any concentration C that you will, that you will find out from this uh, formula. Right after that, divided by limiting molar conductivity. Okay, ma'am. So this thing that is molar conductivity at concentration C is equals to this one that is kappa into 1000 by molarity. How do we calculate this? And also next is uh, the dissociation constant is equals to C alpha square. Just ignore one here. That, uh, ignore the alpha part here because alpha is very less as compared to one here. Okay. Now one thing more, bacha, one more thing that is, wait, that is, that is, that is, that is, just wait, wait. That is called Loss Law. Now see this very carefully. What is called Loss Law? How do you calculate limiting molar conductivity? For Loss Law state that the limiting molar conductivity of a compound is equals to the molar conductivities of the anions plus cations multiplied by the stoichiometry coefficients. Okay, so this is the Corlosh Law. This is the Corlosh Law. Next vector we have, next vector we have the conceptual question okay there are two type of conceptual question that can be formed here right first is how conductance vary okay conductance is a sample paper question okay conductance varies with more the number of an ions more is the conductance if the temperature is increased conductance is increased okay not conductivity if the temperature increases conductance increases right okay not conductivity conductivity decreases next is Acidic and basic strength. More the acidic strength, okay, more will be the H positive ion given. More will be the ions. More the basic strength, more will be the OH negative. More will be the and ions here. Size of naked ion. Size of naked ion means, okay, that is not hydrated ion. Okay, that is directly proportional to the size of naked ion. Inversely to the size of hydrated ion. To the size of hydrated ion. Okay, inversely to the size of hydrated ion, right? Now, strong electrolyte, it is like 100% dissociation it gives. That is why strong electrolyte has more conductance as compared to weak electrolyte. Now, on dilution, everyone here, on dilution, everything increases, just conductivity decreases. Okay, very important thing, very, 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 very important thing. On dilution, when you are adding the water, why so ma'am? What is the reason? Conductance and conductivity are the same. Because, bacha, in the whole mixture, the ions increases. Okay, the ions are getting increased. But, but, when we are talking about conductivity, when we are talking about one unit volume, in that case, the distance is more. So, in that case, the ions will be less in that unit volume. That is why we are saying conductivity, kappa decreases, everything else, conductance, molar conductivity, equivalent, everything else increases here. Right? Next is the Faraday's law. 
right faraday's law first law second law now what is faraday's first law faraday's first law this is the weight deposited that is equal to z id i is the current p is the time here okay now that is equal to equivalent weight by faraday and equivalent weight is equal to molecular weight by n n is the number of electron lost or gained right by that atom by that metal right and z is also called electrochemical equivalence okay right now second law is if those uh, cells are in series in that case if those cells are in series in that case weight of metal a divided by weight of metal b equals to equivalent weight of a divided by equivalent weight of b or you can say weight of 1 by equivalent weight of 1 is equals to weight of 2 by equivalent weight of 2 okay both of these are the right things okay bachcha understood this any problem till now any problem any problem Yes, we have completed two chapters. We have completed two chapters in thirty minutes, right? Okay, perfect. Next is the next bacha is chemical kinetics. Next is next chapter is chemical kinetics. Very simple, very easy chapter. Very simple, very easy chapter. So there are two three things that you must know. Now, for example, you have this kind of reaction. Okay, this is B. Now in this case, if you want to calculate the average rate that is equals to minus rate will always be divided by the number of moles here. Rate of appearance and disappearance will not be divided by the number of moles. That is the main point here. That is the highlighted point here. That we divide by calculating the rate we divided by one by R that is number of moles. One by P that is number of moles. And for rate of disappearance the sign is minus. For rate of appearance the sign is positive here. Right when we are calculating rate of reaction, plus minus plus is for appearance, minus is for disappearance. This is a formula that is one by moles d or whatever you are talking about divided by d t. Right, that is the rate of reaction. For appearance, we do not divide it by number of moles. Simply we write it. Rate of appearance is equals to d b by d t. Rate or rate of disappearance is equals to minus d a by d t. Right? Okay. Now what is rate of reaction? Okay, rate of reaction. You want to calculate this. That is minus one by weight dv by dt plus this is the rate of appearance. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, I have done the opposite to this. Yes, it should be positive here. It should be negative here. Okay, it should be positive here and it should be negative here because a is getting disappeared here. That should be positive one by weight d by dv by dt. Right, equals to minus one by a dA by dt. That is the rate of reaction for this equation. Now, next we have the order of reaction. Now, this x and y are not related to the stoichiometric coefficient in the reaction. Okay, this is defined experimentally, right? Now you have the rate of reaction that is rate is equals to this is the rate constant a raised to power x b raised to power y. Now x plus y is not equals to a plus b. Nothing relation to the stoichiometric coefficient. The addition of x plus y is equals to the order of that reaction. If that is equals to zero, zero order one, one first order, second. Second order, right? Now they will ask you what are the rate constant? What is the units of rate constant? So the unit of rate constant is this. That is mole per liter one minus n second per second, right? The supply n here is order. For example, we are talking about first order reaction. That will be per second. If we are talking about zero order reaction, that will be mole per liter per second. Okay, just put the value of n here, and you will get your answer to the uh, units of rate constant. Right? Okay. Yes, Bacha. Very good. Very good. Very good, Beta. Very good. Next, we have zero order reaction. Okay. We are going to complete the physical chemistry now. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Now, zero order reaction. We are talking about zero order reaction is equals to K. Now, zero order, first order, second order. The formulas of all these three. Right. And then along with the Half life period. Half life period is that when fifty percent of the reactant is consumed, right? Here we have K is equals to initial minus final by T, right? The graph here will be uh, just apply that equate this by Y is equals to M X plus C. Okay, just equate this by Y is equals to M X C. Y will be R here and T will be the X here. You will get the graph that is this one negative slope and this R not will the intercept here. Okay, just equate this by Y is equals to M X plus C. Similarly, for first order reaction, you will have for first order reaction. This is time here. This is log 
r here right that is equals to this will be the slope that is minus k and this is equals to log natural log of r0 this is the graph of first order reaction right next beta we have just equate it by y is equals to mx plus c beta just equate it by y is equals to mx plus c now this is a first order reaction for first order reaction that is 2.303 natural uh, log base 10 initial by final always there is initial by final one more trick here that is they will tell you that okay you have 70 percent is dissociated then how will you apply this formula that will be k is equals to 2.303 by t natural log now 70 percent is consumed here 70 percent is consumed okay in that case the initial that you will take that will be 100 and the final that will be 70 percent is consumed the left amount is 30. So you will apply this formula. This question is also exam uh, asked in your exams. Okay. Now next thing here is butcha, that is T half. Here T half is directly proportional to for zero order reaction directly proportional to the initial concentration. For first order it is not dependent on the initial concentration that is equals to 0.693 divided by k and for sec second order reaction the uh, equation here is k is equals to 1 by t 1 by final by 1 by initial t is equals t half is equals to inversely proportional to the initial concentration yes okay now this is another formula of activation energy and temperature k is equals to a e raised to the power e a by r t and e is the activation energy and k is the rate constant t is the temperature for two temperatures here and two rate constants the formula is log k2 by k1 e by 2.603 r t1 by t2 t uh, t1 minus t2 by t1 into t2 okay very important formula again Okay, but uh, now we have completed physical chemistry. Okay, we have completed physical chemistry here. Now, but uh, we are going to complete here organic chemistry reactions. So, are you all ready? Yes, beta. Ready? Yes, very good. Let us see this. Let us see this reaction. Okay, perfect. Okay, there is no time for rest here. Okay, no rest today. Right, okay. Uh, we have completed the revision for physical chemistry now. Next revision is naming reactions. Okay, next revision is naming reaction. One by one, we are going to do the naming reaction. After that, we are going to do the distinguished test, all this. And after that, we will start off with inorganic and some most important questions of organic chemistry also. Okay, now first is soda lime decarboxylation. Here you have RCONA. This is NaOHCO. Heated, you will have hydrocarbon which will be rh okay you will have the hydrocarbon with the same number of alkyl chain right next is coles electrolysis here you will have hydrocarbon that is rr right the hydrocarbon will be the double of uh, your the double of alkyl chains right next is woods reaction woods reaction woods fatigue reaction and fatigue reaction three are similar in woods reaction both are alkyl right both are alkyl halide using the dry ether you will have rr here that is alkene here and when we are talking about woods fatigue reaction one is aryl one is alkyl one is aryl one is alkyl everything else is same we put sodium here and then dry ether you will have the combination of these two that is r and this is the phenyl part here Next is fatigue reaction. Both are going to be the aryl part here and you will have the formation of phenyl, diphenyl or biphenyl here. Yes, but uh, next question is Reed's reaction. For Reed's reaction, beta, this is one is Darzen reaction. This is the Darzen reaction, okay? Wait, wait, wait. I'm writing here Darzen reaction. Here you have Rx, that is, here you have actually you have ROH, right? SO. Cl2 here you have RCl plus SO2 plus HCl okay so this is if you want to convert alcohol to mm, alcohol to alkyl halide yeah if you want to convert alcohol to alkyl halide that is thionyl chloride and this is sulfonyl chloride this is Reed's reaction this is Darzen reaction this is Darzen reaction yes bacha okay now, next thing that we are going to do here, next thing that we are going to do here, that is Clemenzel reduction. 
Okay, beta. Next thing that we have is Clemens introduction. For that, you have carbon double bond in the presence of zinc amalgam and acidic condition. This will be converted to CHO here. That is hydrocarbon. With wolf kishnoor reduction, the same product and reactants, but there is difference in the reagents. That is hydrazine in the basic condition. Hydrazine in the basic condition. Next, you have Filkenstein reaction. In Filkenstein reaction, bacha, you have Rx. That is, uh, this is halogen exchange reaction. Okay, you will have Rx where X is equals to chlorine or bromine. Okay, chlorine or bromine. You will put NaI and acetone that will be converted into Ri here. Right? Okay. Next, bacha, we have next question that we have that is Swartz reaction where again this is a halogen exchange reaction. Where you have the formation of RF, here also X is equals to chlorine or bromine, right? And these are the inorganic fluoride. And these are the inorganic fluorides. Inorganic fluorides. Yes, bacha, understood this and you will have the formation of alkyl fluoride, which is otherwise very difficult, which is otherwise very difficult to form here, right? Okay, next we have borodin hans sticker reaction. Here RCOAG. Right, that is silver salt of carboxylic acid is converted into RBR, alkyl bromide. Here we add, here we add Br2 and CCl4 and you will have RBR here. Next, bacha, we have Gatterman reaction. There is difference between Gatterman and Gatterman coach. In Gatterman coach reaction, you have benzene to benzaldehyde. This is your disonium salt that will be from any aniline that we will form from aniline right add hbr we are talking about getterman reaction just add powder here that is copper powder plus hbr you will have bromobenzene if you add copper powder plus hcl you will have chlorobenzene cyanide is not formed here that means you cannot form this thing you cannot form this thing okay this thing will be formed in case of sand mayer's reaction in case of sand mayer's reaction you will be able to form cyanide here by using cucn and kcn right this is n2cl hbr co2 and this is the salt here in sand mayer reaction you use salt and the same thing will be formed as in case of ketterman reaction yes bacha understood this Yes, beta, understood this. One more thing here, one more thing here that I want to add. If you are reacting disonium salt, disonium salt with Ki, then you will have the formation of, then you will have the formation of, this is Ki, then you will have the formation of idobenzene here. Right? Okay, no, there is no name of this reaction. This is a simple reaction. If you shake this with Ki, then you will have the formation of idobenzene here. Right? Now, bar Schumann reaction is when you have disonium salt, right? This aniline will be converted to disonium salt. And now, disonium salt, when reacted with HBF4 and heated, this will be converted into a ben uh, this will be converted to fluorobenzene. And now, if you are adding another reaction is this is this is Balshimen. This that I am doing here is not Balshimen. Okay, I just write it here. This is not Balshimen reaction. If you have N2Cl and you are adding uh, HBF4 and then adding NaNO2, then adding copper here, this will be converted to nitrobenzene. Okay, this will be converted to nitrobenzene. Usually, students get confused in these two reactions. Okay, then we have Kohl's reaction. Herfinol is converted into salicylic uh, acid, right? And by adding NaOH, CO2, NH positive. Next is Ramatima reaction. Phenol is converted into salicylic aldehyde in presence of chloroform and this one. And here you have electrophile that is CCl2, that is dichlorocarbene. Uh, and also, if you are using CCl4 here, then you will have the formation of benz uh, uh, carboxylic then you will have the formation of salicylic acid, okay? Then you will have the formation of salicylic acid, right? Okay, now next is Williamson synthesis reaction. Here you have the formation of ester, uh, ether. Why I am writing it wrong, right? Here you have the formation of ether. And one very important thing, very, 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 very important thing here, that alkyl halide should be primary halide okay because this will follow a transition state mechanism that is a sin 2 mechanism here and that way it should have less steric hindrance that is why 
एल्काइल हेलाइट शुड ऑलवेज बी प्राइमरी हेलाइट हेयर राइट ओके नेक्स्ट इज डाउस प्रोसेस एज दिस बॉन्ड इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू ब्रेक दिस बॉन्ड इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू ब्रेक बिकॉज ऑफ द डबल बॉन्ड करेक्टर द एस पी टू करेक्टर ऑफ दिस कार्बन एंड बिकॉज फिनाइल कैटाइन इज नॉट सेबल दिस क्वेश्चन कैन ऑल्सो बी आस इन द क्वेश्चन पेपर ओके बिकॉज देर आर थ्री रीजन डबल बॉन्ड करेक्टर दिस कार्बन इज एस पी टू हैबिटाइज सो दैट इज वाई दिस कार्बन एंड सीसीएल बॉन्ड इज डिफिकल्ट टू ब्रेक एंड थर्ड इज फिनाइल कैटाइन is not stable okay what is phenyl ketan the ketan this one is not stable this ketan is not stable this ketan is unstable this ketan is unstable right now there are lots of drastic condition that is nohc uh, this is a uh, 623 kelvin 300 atmospheric pressure that means to break this bond you need drastic condition here then you will have the formation of phenol and the main important part here is If you are adding NO2 group, that is electron withdrawing group at ortho and para position, NO2 group at ortho and para position, uh, conditions decreases. Okay, drastic conditions here decreases. The temperature here required will be less here. If you are talking about two, four, six nitro chloro benzene, in that case, you will just warm this and you will have your picric acid. Right? Understood this? okay it at meta position it doesn't matter because at meta position we do not have any negative charge in the resonating structures next is hell or hall zelensky reaction that is hvz reaction in this case alpha hydrogen will be replaced by the halogen that you have added here i have added chlorine here so alpha hydrogen will be replaced by chlorine here yes next we have stefan's reduction this is stefan reduction this is not stefan reduction but this is actually same to stefan reduction only because the reagents are quite similar this is rcn is converted to rcho using essential cl2 and acid here you have rno2 is converted to rnh2 using shcl and fehcl okay you can use either tin or you can use iron here iron is preferred because iron because iron with hcl it forms fecl2 which on hydrolysis form hcl right that is why we need hcl uh, hcl required from outside is less here right so that is why fecl is preferred here fe is preferred here next is rosenman reduction for rosenman reduction acyl chloride is converted into this is hydrogen okay it is converted into aldehyde it is converted into aldehyde and here we use like large catalyst that is h2 h2 in the presence of a catalyst and this is acting as a poison this is acting as a poison this is acting as a poison right we can also use caco3 or quinoline in presence uh, in place of this bso4 right next is alkyl now this lindlar's catalyst another use of this lindlar's catalyst is that it converts alkyl to cis alkene if you want to convert alkyl to trans alkene alkyl to trans alkene in that case you will do the birch reduction here birch reduction that is liquid ammonia right liquid ammonia and metal that is na or uh, lithium right okay these two are not important for your 12th exam so you can leave it also but this is important but this is important for your 12th exam right next is gatterman coach reaction as i already told you uh for mild chloride that is hco cl is not stable for mild chloride is not stable that is why we use carbon monoxide and hcl which is going to give us for mild chloride here immediately that is going to be consumed in this reaction right and we will have the formation of benzaldehyde here from the benzene next we have is a tart reaction that is toluene to benzaldehyde here we are using chromyl chloride that is red in color in presence of inorganic solvent right next is hoffman bromamide degradation in that case you will have a degraded amine right that is co will be uh, will banished from here you will have the formation of rnh2 the reagents here are br2 and koh right okay or you can also that can also be written that is kobr can also be written here right next is hoffman ammonolysis in that case this excess in the excess of this uh, alkyl halide that will be converted ammonia will be converted to 1 degree then to 2 degree then to 3 degree then to quaternary ammonia salt yes next we have gabriel phthalamide reaction very important reaction of ammonia 
very important reaction right in this firstly we are taking firstly this is uh, phthalamide this is phthalamide adding koh this h will be replaced by k positive then adding r this k positive will be replaced by r then adding noh also the third step here will be aqueous noh aqueous naoh then these two bonds will break here and you will have the formation of phthalic acid and this is for one degree amines this is for one degree amines very important only for one degree amines yes bachcha next we have mendel reduction that is if you want to convert if you want to reduce this cyanide use any in presence of alcohol like ethanol right uh, you can also write it here uh, zinc amalgam okay zinc amalgam in presence of ethanol right you will have rcl will be converted to reduced to rch2 nh2 right this is mendel's reduction next is oxymercuration demercuration so there are three methods first is uh, first is one by one let us do this one by one let us do this one by one if you have if you have acid catalyzed if you using if you are forming uh, alcohol using acid catalyzed acid catalyzed hydrolysis in that case the method will be carbocation carbocation right and the rearrangement of carbocation will take place second method is this one that is if you have alkene and you doing the oxymercuration demercuration in that case it will follow markovnikov rule markovnikov means the negative part of the less number of hydrogen right and in case of hydroboration oxidation it is going to follow anti markovnikov rule that means negative part on the more number of hydrogen any problems till now we are almost going to complete the naming reaction here okay now next is ozonosis right how to do ozonosis very simple trick i'll tell you very simple thing there are two kind of ozonosis first is reductive then there is oxidative for reductive they will give you o3 and in presence of some zinc catalyst right zinc right and in oxidative you will be given h2o2 right okay so here just break this bond and add just break this bond that's a ch and add double bond this will be ch2 double bond right so here write it in a good manner this is c h o this is c h double bond o and this is double bond o and this is h right so you have the reduction those ones is reduction reductive ones ones is the product are this just break this double bond and add double bond o right if you want to do oxidative ones ones is this is c h 3 this is c this will be o h okay replace h with o h replace h with oh from the reductive uh, products here okay this one and this will be oh oh c oh and this will be double bond this is h2 this is h2 co3 this is h2 co3 right okay which will be further dissociated into h2o and which will be further dissociated into h2o and co2 you will see these kind of things in your books right okay very simple method now next is a lower condensation very important very important very simple thing that is join carbonyl carbon of one carbon for example if you are doing self aldol cross aldol just one thing join if i am taking of this 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 is a first molecule this is a second molecule if i am considering this as the first molecule join the carbonyl carbon of first molecule that is this carbon that is this carbon with the alpha carbon of second with the alpha carbon of second so what is the product that i am going to form here that is that is ch3 this carbon here this is double bond this is it okay this is again with this one with the double bond okay with other with a double bond okay i am doing this with a double bond so how to do this this double bond o this o will be replaced by this carbon here right okay so i am writing this carbon here and then it is connected to c double bond oh and now fill the valency of this uh, carbon that is one hydrogen that is ch right and you have your answer here okay this is going to be the answer okay bachcha understood this this is going to be the answer what is the trick just join carbonyl carbon of one molecule with alpha carbon of other right okay if you have cross aldol aldol same thing will be applied in cross aldol there will be 
multiple products okay there will be multiple products because if you have a and b if you have a plus b two products a will be reacted with a b with b then a with b first you will take the carbonyl carbon of this one then you will take the carbonyl carbon of this one and the alpha carbon of this one right alpha of this one so it will lead to various product here right okay and it can lead to more products if you have uh, if you have something like this, if you have something like this, CH3, C double bond O, CH2, CH3. So here you have two kinds of alpha. It will lead to more multiple products there. Right? Okay. Next is Canizaro reaction. Canizaro reaction. Canizaro reaction is one molecule to alcohol, other molecule to sodium salt of carboxylic acid. For example, you have one carbon, so uh, one molecule to alcohol, that means methanol, okay? Just uh, write one methanol here and write one carboxylic salt here, that is same number of carbon. You have one number of carbon, one carbon here, so this will be HCONA, right? That is sodium salt of carboxylic acid with same number of carbons, okay? Understood this? Yes. Next we have very important thing here but very important very important if you are talking about plus M and minus M. So we have completed the reactions now I am going to talk about plus M and minus some of the important things from GOC right that is if you are having plus M plus M will be the indication will be ring will be attached to a group that has lone pairs okay in that case it is going to show plus M for example these are the group that shows plus M here right they all have lone pair right these, these are ortho paradirectic then if you are talking about minus m here talking about minus m usually they are activating and these are deactivating minus m means this is attached to a group that is further attached to a atom with a double bond but now this a is more electronegative as compared to this g right for example if you are talking about this c double bond o h and if you are talking about c double bond o o h Right, these are meta directing because this is attached to a carbon and carbon is further attached to oxygen which is more electronegative with a double bond. So it is going to take away the electrons that it is going to show minus M effect here and minus M effect show meta directing. It is meta directing in nature. So this is going to, I am talking about electrophilic substitution here. This is going to help you in so many reactions of phenols and aldehyde, carboxylic acid, everything. Right, okay. Now the exceptional part here is halogen shows minus i and plus n. Halogen show minus i plus n but only in case of usually mesomeric effect is dominating but only in this case inductive effect is dominating that is why for halogens we write that this is ortho para directing ortho para directing because of the plus f but it is deactivating but it is deactivating very important thing okay it is deactivating because of minus i dominance but it is ortho para directing because ortho para or meta directing is decided by the mesomeric effect right next is the para is always major always when you have ortho para directing groups in that case para is always the major because of the symmetry but only in this case except for this case whenever you have hydrogen bonding in this case in case of ortho nitrophenol you will have major product ortho as the major product right next are which are two most 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 important reactions where you have a lot of reactions but these are reactions for last minute revision these two are most important reactions okay now if you have a carbonyl come on and you have NH2Z here, Z can be anything, Z can be anything, you have a proper chart in your NCRT for this, right, what are the products here, this will be C double bond NZ, this is going to be the product here, shift space, oxygen, all these things will be formed from this reaction, right, now if you have, this reaction is also very important, if you have carbonyl carbon and you have, or you have carbon dioxide, okay, carbon dioxide is also asked, carbon dioxide, same method will be used, okay, in case of carbon dioxide, you will have the formation of carboxylic acid right what will happen here bacha? this is negative this is positive this is positive this is negative it is going to attack here the electrons are going to jump here right so you will have the formation of so the electrons are you will have the formation of this bond this is O M G X and this is R okay after hydrolysis we are going to have alcohol right we are going to have alcohol and the carbon carbon dioxide I was talking about same reaction you will have the same reaction, same reaction. This is going to attack here and the electrons are going to jump here. Hence, this is double bond. This is O, this is MgX and this is R. 
okay then this will be replaced by hl right this is the first part one more reaction okay that is the formation of cyanohydrin that is same reaction okay that is for example you have c double bond o and this is this positive part this is negative part always in carbonyl group this negative part will be attacked here electrons will jump here and here you will have the formation of cyanohydrin okay always in carbonyl group positive negative positive negative okay right next is next is you have exceptions okay few exceptions that i am going to talk about okay few exceptions that we are going to talk about very good bachcha now this coh and nh2 they do not give friedel craft reaction because here in case of in friedel craft reaction what you have you have a lewis acid right that is electron deficient here this nitrogen is not so electronegative as compared to phenol phenol oxygen phenol also have oxygen but the electrons are very electronegative okay oxygen is very electronegative so that is why it is not going to donate the electrons to lewis acid but here in this case it is going to donate the electron to the lewis acid that is with alcl3 that we are using in friedel craft reactions okay that is why it does not give any friedel craft reaction the acid will be attached here the acid will be attached here not here it will not take out the electrophile here right and you also in this case also you have c double bond o oh in this case you have these two lone pairs because of the lone pairs it is not showing friedel craft reaction same electron rich it is electron rich the compound is electron rich this molecule is electron rich so uh, friedel craft the uh, lewis acid is going to attack here Yes, bacha. Understood this? <clears throat> okay, bacha. Tell me. Understood this? Yes, bacha. Okay. Next is very important. That is enolene. Now, this is an exception that enolene is ortho para directing, right? But in case of nitration, it gives forty seven percent meta, two percent ortho, and something fifty something percent para. Why so? What is the reason? what is the reason so it gives meta product because in acidic condition in nitration we use concentrated h2so or concentrated hno3 in that case it is going to give uh, in acidic condition it is going to take h positive from here and these are going to attack here and that is why and that is why these lone pair are going to attack on this h positive and take the h positive and that is why it is going to form any linear any linear ion and this any linear ion is meta directing and this any linear ion is meta directing that is why we have 47% meta right now how do we have para product here right the same condition here is do the acetylation acetylation is done by acid anhydride plus pyridine pyridine is a stronger base as compared to this right so it is not going to these two not these two are not going to react here right okay now use pyridine this will be acetylation is done after that do the bromination or the nitration here you will get the para as a major product then add acidic condition you will have aniline right you will have the para substituted aniline in this case right bachcha understood yes now everyone here understood bachcha yes beta understood yes perfect now next is oxidation of alcohol for oxidation of alcohol everyone here strong electrolyte we are talking about 1 degree to coh 2 degree to ketone 3 degree to no reaction okay strong electrolyte can be strong uh, not electrolyte strong oxidizing agents can be that is kmno4 kmno4 k2cr207 or you can say jones reagent in presence of jones reagent in presence of h2so4 CrO3 in presence of H2SO4, right? Mild can be PCC, PDC, right? All these are mild oxidizing agents. Jones reagent in presence of acetone also, right? Okay. If nothing is mentioned, that means Jones reagent is a strong oxidizing agent. First, mild oxidizing agent, one degree alcohol to CHO, two degree to ketone, three degree no reaction. And when we are talking about copper here at three degree, very important reaction. One degree and two degree is going to behave as mild oxidizing agent, but for three degree, it is going to give us alkene here. It is going to give us alkene here. MnO two, MnO two. Okay, you can also avoid this one. You can also avoid this one, but I want you to you know know this one. Okay, that is MnO two, MnO two. <coughs> 
This is for allylic or benzylic alcohol only. No other alcohol. If you have benzylic or allylic alcohol, only then there will be oxidation here. Right? Next is hydration of alkynes. <clears throat> Hydration of alkynes, everyone. Very simple thing. Just break the pi bond here. This is CH. This is double bond. Okay, this is C. This is CH3. OH is here. Why? Because positive charge here will be more stable and 2 here. Then we have this is the enol form. After the tautomerism, then there will be tautomerism. Then there, this is an important reaction. That is why I have written here specially. Right? Okay, there will be tautomerism. This will be CH3, C double bond O, and this is CH3. So hence we will have the formation of ketone here. Right? This is in the formation of aldehyde and ketones. Very important reaction. Next butcha, we have distinguished test here everyone. Next we have distinguished test here. Yes. Okay. In next half hour we are going to complete the revision. Okay. We just need 30 more minutes. Okay. Just 30 more minutes and we are going to complete the revision here. Yes butcha. Okay. Perfect. Now for Lucas test for alcohols. Now for distinguished 1 degree, 2 degree, 3 degree alcohol you have Lucas reagent that is ZnCl2. Okay. That is Lucas reagent is ZnCl2 plus HCl okay ZnCl2 plus HCl 1 degree turbidity will be after prolonged heating that is totally after 30 minutes okay and 2 degree after 5 minutes turbidity after 5 minutes 3 degree 3 degree turbidity immediately okay turbidity will be formed immediately then we have second that is Tollens test Tollens test is silver mirror test here you have this complex of silver okay you have this silver complex where the oxidation state of silver is plus 1 and this is converted into silver mirror and this is very important this is only for aliphatic and aromatic this is for aldehyde both aliphatic and aromatic both aliphatic and aromatic now we are going to talk about felling test felling test beta felling a is copper sulfate solution felling b is rochelle salt that is sodium potassium tartrate sodium potassium tartrate right next which are very very important this is for only aliphatic aldehyde not for aromatic aldehyde. Yes, okay. Now, but here you have CO2 positive from felling and felling B solution. You will have CO2 positive ions here, which will be uh, oxy which will be reduced to CO2 and red PPT will be formed. Okay, red precipitate of this will be formed. Now, now what is Benedict solution? Benedict solution is same as this. Just in case of tartrate, we use citrate, right? And the next thing is that felling solution cannot be stored. Benedict can be stored. Okay, this is same. Given by aliphatic aldehyde, red PPT, PPT will be formed. Everything is same, just that the Rochelle salt is different, the felling B solution is different, but the PPTs are same. You will, you will have copper 2 positive in Benedict and red PPTs in Benedict. Right? Okay. Next is NaCO3 test, sodium bicarbonate test, that is for carboxylic acid. You will have, there will be a brisk effervescence of carbon dioxide. Right? Okay. That will tell us that there is NaCO3, there is presence of carboxylic acid. For iodoform test, very, 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 very important test, very important test. Okay. For iodoform test, what are the things? How do we identify? This is giving iodoform test. Okay. For aldehyde and ketone, CH3, CO group should be there. If you see this group, that will show iodoform test. If you see 2 degree alcohol, secondary alcohol with CH3, that will show, give iodoform test. If you see ethanol, that will give iodoform test. Right? Okay. Next thing, butcha, we have reagents. Reagents we use I2 NaOH or we can do I2 NaOC or you can use your NaOX. Okay. Or you can use NaOX. Right? These are the reagents that will be given to you. What is the product form? That is CHI3 is form which is giving the yellow precipitate here. Right, butcha? Okay. Next is Hinsberg test. This is for amines that distinguish of 1 degree, 2 degree, 3 degree. Right. Now, this is the Hinsberg reagent. After reacting with primary, it will have the minus HCl and you will have the formation of this product which has one acidic hydrogen. That is why it is soluble in alkali. This is soluble in alkali. This is soluble in alkali. Now, talking about this, here you have this hydrogen and this Cl. They will uh, be removed. Right, hence you will have this product do not have any acidic hydrogen. So this is insoluble in alkali. It is insoluble in alkali. Insoluble in alkali. 
नेक्स्ट बच्चा यू हैव दिस वन द प्राइमरी द द टर्शरी दिस इज प्राइमरी दिस इज सेकेंडरी दिस इज टर्शरी एंड टर्शरी डू नॉट हैव एनी हाइड्रोजन दैट इज वाई देर इज नो रिएक्शन ओके देर इज नो रिएक्शन दिस इज हाउ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टेस्ट ओके दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टेस्ट फॉर इट्स बर्ग रिएजन फॉर डिस्टिंग्विश ऑफ वन डिग्री टू डिग्री थ्री डिग्री ओके राइट ओके नेक्स्ट वी हैव एजोडाइट टेस्ट There's just two reactions. First is diazonium salt is reacted with phenol and para para hydrogen. The hydrogen at the para position will be removed, right? It will be minus HCl and you will have the formation of orange dye here. In case of phenol, you will have orange dye, right? In case of aniline, you will have yellow dye. The color of that dye and what is the compound formed is important. Right here also Cl and HCl will remove from this side and you will have the formation of yellow dye here. Right? Orange dye, yellow dye. Orange for alcohol for phenol and yellow for aniline. Right? Okay. Yes. Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute, but ja. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Now next is two four DNP test. Two four DNP test. Now two four two four DNP test. What is this? Just see this very carefully. For two four DNP test, you have carbon. This reacts with this uh, reaction. There will be elimination of Water here, it will be elimination of water here, right? Oxygen from this side, H two from this side, and hence you will have the product formation here. This this product, according to the means that according to the aldehyde or ketone, what you have, it will give us different different colors. Now, if you have color PPT. If you have color PPT, that means you have aldehyde or ketone. That means there is presence of a carbonyl group. Okay, that means there is presence of a carbonyl group. That to free carbonyl group. Okay, very important. Next is that is why glucose do not give this aldehyde this two for DNP test. Right. Next is nitrous acid. For nitrous acid test, the reagent here is HNO two and NaNO two or this. Okay, you will have the formation of diazonium salt. In case of aliphatic one degree, you will have the elimination of N two gas. In case of aromatic one degree, no N two gas will be released. What is the reason? Because, बच्चा, this R N two C N. This is very unstable. This is unstable. This is more unstable as compared to this one. As compared to diazonium salt. Diazonium salt is also unstable, but it still needs some initiation to liberate nitrogen. But this does not need any initiation. It it will just uh, it is so unstable. By the time it is formed, it will liberate hydrogen uh, nitrogen gas, right? So this is how you are going to distinguish aliphatic and aromatic one degree. You can also distinguish other amines, but that is not in your syllabus. Okay, right? Yes. Next, bacha. Next, we have coordination. D block and bi molecules. Are you all ready for coordination D block and bi molecules? Yes, very simple. I have just this simple flow chart for you. Okay, see this. Mm. <clears throat> see this. First is Werner's theory. Main highlighted point I have discussed here. Okay, best for your revision. I am telling you best for your revision. Okay, Werner's theory primary valency is oxidation number which is ionizable. Secondary valency it says that it is coordination number which is non-ionizable. Right? Then we are talking about bidentate and ambidentate. Bidentate which have two donating sides and out of that only one is donating at one time. That is either uh, sorry bidentate uh, bidentate is when you have two donating sides and out of Of them both are donating, right? Both are donating at one time. Ambidentate is when we have two donating sides and only one is donating at one time, right? So ambidentate is NO two, it uh, NO two or SCA. These are ambidentates, right? I'm talking about bidentate. Ethylene one to diamine, right? That is EN is the bident uh, bidentate or oxalate is bidentate, right? Okay, very important. Next, what is strong field ligand? Strong field ligands that causes pairing. Weak field ligand that causes no pairing. <clears throat> okay, in weak field ligand there is no pairing. Okay, there is no pairing. Okay, so strong field ligand you have like NH three, CN, CO, OX. These are strong field ligand. Weak field ligand at CL. 
F negative. These are weak field ligands. This will help you in VBT theory. Okay, this is going to help you in VBT theory. Okay, so unpaired electron, what is paramagnetism, diamagnetism? Unpaired electron are paramagnetic in nature, paired electron are diamagnetic in nature. How do we calculate the magnetic moment here? That is under root n, n plus 2. n is the number of unpaired electron. Right, this is in the Bohr magneton. Right, next, bacha, we have octahedral. This next is CFT here. Next is CFT. Before CFT, just th this is for VBT. Okay, this is for VBT. Before CFT, this is the VBT. VBT, usually you will have, I'm 100% sure, they will give you either 4 ligands or they will give you 6 ligands. Yes, okay. Only these two questions will be asked in the exam. For 4 ligands, you will have either sp3 hybridization or dsp2 hybridization. If sp3 hybridization, that will be tetrahedral. dsp2, that will be square planar. For six, for 6 ligands, that can be octahedral. Okay, if it is D2SP3, that will be inner octahedral. SP3D2, that will be outer octahedral. Right? Okay, simple, very simple. Now, let us talk about the CFT here. Let us talk about CFT here. Octahedral complexes, but firstly, we are going to talk about octahedral complexes here. Very important, very, very important. Octahedral and tetrahedral. For CFT, but this is, I am mentioning it here, CFT. Right, for CFT, if you are talking about octahedral, there will be three. There will be D generation will be broken. And here you will have uh, DXY, DYZ, DZX, that is T2G. And above you will have the higher energy will be of EG. Right, okay. And the difference is called delta. Right, and here the difference is called delta D. And what is the relation between delta T and delta O? That is delta T is equals to 4 by 9 delta O. Okay, that means delta O is greater than delta T. Okay, delta O is greater than delta T. That is why this always form high spin complexes. Always form high spin complexes because delta, this delta, this CFS crystal field splitting energy is so low that it will always form, it will always do the, uh, it will always form high spin complexes. There will be no pairing always because the distance is so less, the electrons will always jump here, right? Okay, it will always form tetrahedral, always form high spin complexes and here you have no G here. G is for symmetry and octahedral complexes are symmetrical, tetrahedral are not symmetrical. Here you have EG and here above you have T2G, right? Okay, yes. Yes. Now, another most important thing here is for octahedral, you can have low spin, you can have high spin complexes. Both can be formed, right? For low spin and high spin complexes, D1, D2, D3, D8, D9, D10. These six configurations will have same number of unpaired electron, whether they are in low spin or they are in high spin. Okay? Yes, D1, D2, D3, D8, D9, D10. Okay? Understood? Yes. Yes. Next, we have the dependency of CFSC. The dependency of CFSC, bacha, <clears throat> more the oxidation state, more is the CFSC here. And next is 3D has less CFSC as compared to 4D and 5D. Right? That is why the difference here, the CFSC is so large that it always makes it very difficult to do the non-pairing here. It will always be pairing. Okay? They will always form low spin. There will always be pairing. There will always be pairing. There will always be pairing. Right? Okay? Understood? Next is... <clears throat> Square planar, that is not in your syllabus, but this can be asked, okay? The whole process of square planar is not in your syllabus, right? But this equation can be asked that CFSC of square planar is more as compared to CFSC of octahedral as compared to CFSC of tetrahedral. And tetrahedral always form, the CFSC is low, so low here that it always form high spin complexes. Always there will be no pairing, no pairing. Now, ma'am, how you are deciding whether there will be pairing or no pairing? There's a simple trick to that. That is, the simple trick here is, if the CFS is high, the gap is high, the gap is high, then there will be pairing, okay? If the gap is high, there will be pairing of electrons, right? CFSE high, gap is high, there will be pairing of electron, and that will, strong field is going to cause the high CFSC, right? And if there is a strong field ligand, there is pairing that will cause low spin complexes. And 
this also is very important that in that case delta o that means cfs is more than pairing energy that is why there is pairing of electrons here right okay now remember all these things if you have cfs low things will be opposite like low cfs gap is low there is uh, pairing is less that is high spin complex is weak field ligand and delta o will be less than pairing right okay bachcha understood this yes next bachcha we have next this is the spectrochemical series bachcha this is the spectrochemical series yes that you need to remember this is from weak field this is the strongest field ligand this is weak field increasing order of uh, ligand field strength that is spectrochemical series next we have ionization ionization see this very carefully ionization isomer these are the isomerization okay these are the isomerization very simple way i am going to tell you this ionization isomer that means counter ion will be different okay that means bromine will be in one molecule that will be one compound it will be inside the coordination sphere one compound bromine will be as a counter ion <coughs> okay counter ion is behaving as a ligand and uh, as a counter ion right that is ionization isomer next we have solvate or hydrate here h2 will be inside the coordination sphere and in another molecule that will be outside the coordination sphere next is linkage isomer linkage isomer will be shown by mb dependent ligand for example no2 and next is ono so there are two different linkages so these two will be the linkage isomers right next is coordination here you will have two different coordination spheres and there will be exchange of ligands the ligands for example uh in first case you have cr this is cn right okay and this is co and this is uh, nh3 okay just an example and in another case you will have cr nh3 and this will be just simple that is m n6 and this is m x6 okay another will be m x6 and this is n y6 okay this is the first and this is m y6 and n x6 this is the difference of coordination okay you will have exchange of ligands here right okay next example is facial and meridional what is facial what is meridional in case of facial the ligands in the octahedral geometry are equal are in the adjacent position b b b a a a and in case of meridional for example this is the upper part this is the lower part these are the four ligands on the octahedral on the square planar face right so this is the one plane here in this case this b b b is on the meridian okay this is in the meridian okay so what is meridian that is one upper one and two this one okay that will be b b and b this is meridional isomer okay this is meridional isomer talking about cis and trans talking about cis and trans trans are something that are opposite to each other cis are when we have they are adjacent to each other that is called cis main important part is if you have all the Uh, ligands different in that case it is going to show two cis and one trans okay how it is going to show we have done it in detail right now is the time to just you know revise this thing that is two cis and one trans isomer right okay next bachcha we have chelation provide stability now if they ask you which is more stable out of this and this this will be more stable or they can also ask you crc2o4 right this one okay here also this is going to be more stable because whenever there is chelation there is ring there is going to be stability so chelation is going to find, uh, provide us the stability next bachcha is a biomolecule okay two chapters left just two chapters left yes okay everyone here everyone here see this very carefully this is third i'm writing it here very important structures here third always if you are talking about glucose or you are talking about fructose here right in both the cases third oh is on the left side third oh is on the left side right let us talk about the cyclic structures here let us talk about the cyclic structure just remember this cyclic structure just remember this cyclic structure and remember this one that is if you want to convert fischer to cyclic remember this one that is dr that is 
right hand side will be down right hand side will be down okay if you want to remember this structure only that is just uh, make a pyranos ring here okay here 1 2 3 4 5 and here you will see that just on the third carbon you will have oh on the above everywhere else you will have oh on the downside in alpha carbon in alpha glucose in alpha d glucose on the third carbon oh is on the above everywhere else OH is on the downside yes okay make a pyranos ring third carbon third carbon OH is on the left that means it is on the uh, left means upside okay very important only the third carbon OH is on the upside or you can say the left side right okay everywhere else first second and third fourth position you will have OH on the downside and fifth position will always be more molecular mass will be above that is CH2OH will be above and H will be down because here we have no OH or H right now in case of beta there will be difference of C1 there will be difference of C1 okay difference of difference of C1 or I am right alpha and beta C1 is different when we are talking about alpha and beta in any case, C1 will be different here. Okay, here we have C1 where we have OH on the downside. Here we have CH or C1 where OH on the above side. That is called beta D glucose. Right, that is the beta D glucose. Now next we have, bacha, next we have everyone here. This is alpha galactose. Now what is the difference between galactose and glucose? There is difference in C4. Okay, now this is glucose, glucose and galactose. Glucose and galactose, the difference is in the C4 position. The difference is in the C4 position. Okay, there is difference in the C4 position. That's it, everything else is same. If you're talking about alpha glucose, this is alpha galactose, there is difference in this C4 position. This is the C4 position that is different here, right? There is difference in this position. Here you have OH down, so here you have OH up to side. Right? And what is beta galactose? The difference between beta D glucose and beta D galactose is at C4 position. Okay? C4 position. Here we have OH downside. Here we have OH upside. Right? Okay? What we have done till now? Glucose, OH is on the upper side. Everywhere else, OH is on the downside. Fifth position, CHOH is on the upper side. Okay? Then what is beta glucose? There is difference in the C1 position. What is the difference between glucose and galactose? There is difference in the C4 position position okay they are getting reversed here right okay we have done four structures now now what is how to draw the structure of fructose here okay draw this uh, fur uh, furanose ring here okay then this is going to be the first one this is one this is two this is three this is four this is five and this is six okay so here you will have the difference of second carbon okay here here okay but just see this very carefully okay oh downside oh upside oh downside and this one okay oh is on the third carbon again in fructose and glucose things are same on the third carbon oh is on the uh, upside okay here also OH is on the upside on the third carbon everywhere else OH is on the downside okay everywhere else OH is on the downside on uh, here fructose this one carbon that is not in the ring that is outside the ring that is CH2OH and here fifth position is same as glucose right okay very simple way to learn this right next we have beta fructose beta we have difference in the C2 position here okay here we have difference in the C2 position alpha beta there is difference in the c2 position here c2 we have oh downside and here at c2 oh is on the above side okay yes but these were the structures of monosaccharides now let us see disaccharides sucrose is linked to c1 of alpha d glucose and c2 of beta d fructose lactose is we can also ask you uh, lactose is going to give which two monosaccharides on hydrolysis okay that will be c1 beta d glucose beta d lactose c4 beta d glucose and maltose is <coughs> having two things having related to uh, see this sucrose is c1 c2 
lactose and maltose is C1, C4. Okay, here you have alpha, here you have alpha D glucose, beta D fructose, here you have beta D galactose, beta D glucose, and maltose, you have both the units as alpha D glucose. Right? Okay, if you remember this thing, you will be able to draw the structures here. Next thing, bacha, we have very important thing that is starch. Okay, they can ask you what is starch. Okay, what is the difference between starch and uh, uh, cellulose? What is the difference? Okay, starch is made up of two components. One is amylose and another is amylopectin. Amylose and amylopectin both are having alpha D glucose units here. But in amylose, that is a linear structure because it is formed by C1 and C4 linkages of alpha D glucose. And amylopectin is formed by C1, C4 linkages and C1, C6 linkages. That is why this is a branch structure. This is a branched structure and this is a linear structure. This is a linear structure. Now next thing that you have glycogen and cellulose. Now what is glycogen? <coughs> now first you see this is starch and cellulose. Starch is amylose amylopectin. Cellulose is made up of C1 and C4 linkages of beta D glucose. Here we use beta D glucose. Here we use alpha D glucose. That is the difference here. Now about glycogen. Glycogen is animal tissue. Okay, right. When we need glucose, glycogen is converted into glucose. Right. It is same as a myelopectin. There is just more branching here. <coughs> so you will write. This is also formed from alpha D glucose. The linkages here are C1, C4 and C1, C6. But this is more highly branched. Okay. Right. Next, bacha, we have cellulose is a plant tissue. Okay. Cellulose is a plant tissue. Till now, any problem, bacha, any problem, the notes will be provided to you. Don't worry. Just after this session, I am going to send you a link on the telegram session. The notes will be provided to you. Okay. <coughs> okay, bacha, yes. Next, next, bacha, next you have <coughs> everyone here. Next, you have proteins and amino acids. Let's just talk about proteins and amino acids. Proteins have four structures, okay? Primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary. Primary structure is the peptide linkages because amino acids are connected to each other, forming proteins, they have peptide linkages and uh, the disaccharides have glycosidic linkages, okay? This is the primary structure where amino acids are peptide, peptide linkages. Secondary structure is alpha helix or beta pigment structure. Tertiary is fibrous or globular protein. And fibrous is nothing but insoluble in water like our hair and our nails. Right? Globular is that is soluble in water. And quaternary is the highest structure here. When we do the denaturation of protein, then all the structures are destroyed except for the primary structure. Right? Okay? Next thing here is what is essential and non-essential amino acid. Essential is that is required to our body that are not synthesized in our body. Not essential is that that are synthesized in our body and we do not require it from outside. Right? Okay. Next, but we have nucleotide and nucleoside. What is nucleotide? Nucleotide is base plus sugar plus phosphate group. Nucleoside. In nucleoside, we, what is side here? Side is the phosphate group. We do not include phosphate group here. Right? Okay. Yes. Next, we have DNA and RNA. DNA is beta made up of beta D2 D, uh, D oxyribose and this is made up of beta D ribose. Okay, this is made up of beta D ribose. Here, the, uh, here the uh, complementary bases are adenine and thymine, uh, uh, adenine, thymine and uh, guanine and cytosine, right? This is adenine, uracil, guanine and cytosine. The difference here is that we have thymine in DNA and here in place of thymine you have uracil, right? Next is fat soluble and water soluble. Fat soluble are kira that is K vitamin K, vitamin E, vitamin D, vitamin A, okay? These are fat soluble vitamins. These are fat soluble vitamins. Now what about water soluble vitamins? Every, every uh, all the other vitamins are water soluble vitamins like vitamin C, vitamin B, right? Now next thing here is that the exception here is that water soluble vitamins are excreted out of the body through urination but vitamin b12 is the exception where it is stored in our body okay this is the exception except for vitamin b12 which is stored in our body this is not excreted out of our body through urination okay bacha understood this 
Yes, perfect, perfect. Now, we are going to do last chapter. So, everyone here, are you all ready for the last chapter? Yes, Bacha? <coughs> yes, Bacha? So, now we are going to do the last chapter here that is DNF block and then you will be free then just revise these notes and relax and give your exam okay you don't need to worry about anything anything okay because but you have given you 100% you are studying with me you know everything just have faith in you just have confidence and just do everything okay just relax and write down your answer in the answer sheet with a calm mind with a relaxed mind you know what your mental state is going to define if you will be able to a good uh, if you will be able to uh, retrieve the information or not okay if you are in the panic mode in that you know anxious then it will be very difficult for you right how to keep calm just always remember this is my strategy i always used to say myself that okay i have done my 100% there is one thing that i always believe in do your 100% be prepared for the worst. Okay. I know this may sound very negative. That okay ma'am is saying be prepared for the worst. You know what? When you are ready for the worst thing. Okay. This is what is going to happen. What worst is going to happen. You won't be able to clear. What if you won't be able to clear. What if we won't be able to. Nothing. Nobody is going to kill you after that. Okay. Nobody is going to. You will score less marks. Nobody is going to kill you after that. So be prepared for the worst. But. Do your 100% because there should be no guilty. There should be no like, okay, what if I studied hard? I could have got more marks and all those things. There should be no things like that. Okay. There is no room for guilty in our universe. No room for guilty. We will, we will do our 100%. We have given our 100%. We have studied hard. We have studied day and night. We have done PYQs. Everything that was, uh, you know, that was demanded out of us now next thing is upon the god okay leave it upon god right just relax yourself okay this is my strategy whenever i'm going anywhere when i am preparing for any exam anything i give my 100 percent. even when i'm taking the lectures i give my 100 percent. i have made all these notes specially for you right handwritten notes specially for you i have given my 100 percent but I was ready for everything here. I am ready for all the negativity, all the spammers. Why so? Because my brain is ready for that. That is the reason I am able to stand here. Okay. So same thing you should apply in your life. Okay. You have given you 100%. Now leave it upon God. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now let us do DNF block. Okay, bacha. Let us do DNF block. Yes. Okay. Very simple. Very easy. Very simple. Very easy. I am going to do everything for you. Now see this. Okay. Firstly, this is Saptiv Karman Fiko Nigojan 21 to 30. Now firstly, the two exceptional configuration. That is chromium and copper. Here because of half filled exceptional configuration. Na, argon 18. Argon 18. Sorry, I said it in Hindi. So this is argon 18, 4s1, 3d5. Argon 18, 4s1, 3d10. Fully filled and half filled are more stable. Next is, <coughs> my throat is gone now. Okay, so now next is the size, the period and the group. How is atomic size vary? Okay, along the period, along the period size decreases, then it is constant due to screening effect. Along, down the group size increases, then it is constant due to lanthanoid contraction. Due to lanthanoid contraction. Due to lanthanoid contraction. Enthalpy of atomization, bacha. This is dependent upon the metallic bonding that is equals to number of unpaired electron. And for D-block elements, this is very high. Right, then is oxidation state that is variable in case of D-block element. Mn manganese shows maximum D-block states here. That is <coughs> plus 2 to plus 7. Okay, that is plus 2 to plus 7. And if it is including only S electron, that will be minimum state here less oxidation state if it is including s electrons and d electrons that will be maximum oxidation state right now let us talk about the electronic configuration stability ionization enthalpy and 
uh, they will ask you a question regarding ionization and electrode potential. You will have to calculate the, uh, you will have to write the electronic configuration when there is question based on E0 or you have question based on ionization and therapy. Okay. <clears throat> if, if that element is in the half filled or fully filled electronic configuration state, in that case, taking out the electron, that means ionization therapy will be very high. That is inversely proportional to ionization therapy. If that thing is in highly stable state, taking out the electron is difficult, that is why, okay, that is why E0 is very high here, okay. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, no, no, no. If ionization, uh, it is half filled or fully filled, ionization and therapy is high. Okay, so more is the stability, less, uh, uh, more is the stability, more is going to be, wait, wait, wait. Uh, this should be, wait, just uh, wait, 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 wait. We can't say this is inversely, okay? Just wait, I'm writing it here for you, I'm writing it here for you, okay? So, everyone here, everyone here, see this, okay? More is the stability, more is the electrode potential. You know this, more is the stability, more is the electrode potential. Now, more is the stability, it will be very difficult for you to take out the electron, so more is going to be the ionization enthalpy. So, ionization enthalpy is going to be high for stable electronic configuration. Stable electronic configuration. Okay, but if you have something like D4, after gaining, uh, if you have something like D6, after losing one electron, it is going to form more stable state that is going to have less elect uh, less ionization in energy. <coughs> okay, yes. Next, but we have magnetic properties here. Paramagnetic unpaired electron, diamagnetic paired electron. Now that is equals to, mu is equals to under root n, n plus 2, n is the unpaired electron. If the unpaired electrons are 1, that will be 1.72, that will be 2.83, that will be 3.8, right? 4 will be 4.95, will be 5.9. That means it is going to be the number of unpaired electrons that point something, okay? Four unpaired electrons, four point something. Five unpaired electrons, five point something, okay? Unpaired electron cannot be more than that, right? How can this be possible? We have only five orbitals, huh? Okay, <clears throat> now there are a few questions, okay? Theoretical based questions. Same question I asked in your PYQs. First is complex formation. Why, why D block elements form complexes? Because of small size vacant D orbitals. Why they behave as a catalyst? Because of variable oxidation state. Why they form alloys? Because of similar ionic radiate. Why they show colored compounds? Because of DD transition. Except for KMNO4 that form colored compounds due to LMCD. That is charge transfer. Next is interstitial compounds. Why they form interstitial compounds? Because of voids are filled. Because voids are, they have spaces between them that is filled by some metals or non-metals, small metals and non-metals. Now, interstitial compounds, the properties are they are chemically inert, they are very hard and they have, they can retain, retain, uh, retain the conductivity. Okay, so these questions are asked to you directly in your exams. Okay, bacha, understood this? Yes. Next is, last, this is last page of today. Last page of today. Next is lanthanoid contraction. They can ask you what is lanthanoid contraction? What is lanthanoid contraction? Because F orbitals have poor shielding effect as compared to SPD. Now it has minimum shielding effect because it is not able to shield the uh, electron from the inner nucleus. So nucleus is going to attract the electron and the size is going to contract here. The consequences of this are, the consequences, the reason is because of poor shielding effect, the consequences are that the size of 4D and 5D is going to be almost similar. And out of this, which they ask, why zirconium and why zirconium and hafnium have same size? This is because of lanthanoid contraction, right? Okay, next question that they can ask you is, what is, which is more, actinoid or uh, lanthanoid contraction? Actinoid contraction is more as compared to lanthanoid contraction. Now, what is the reason? Why so? Because 5F, because 5F have even poor shielding effect as compared to 4F, right? This is 4F, this is 5F, okay? 5F is so poor, 
right so poor it is so less shielding effect that is why it is not able to you know uh, uh, protect the electrons that is why actinoid contraction is even more as compared to lanthanoid contraction now here are few reactions okay that you have to write now go and write these reactions because if you're not doing reactions of KMnO4 and K2Cr27 I understand but do these eight reactions at least okay do these eight reactions here we have this is the this is the wait this is the preparation step of K2Cr27 this is the preparation three step preparation of K2 Cr207. This is the two-step preparation of two-step preparation of KMnO4. KMnO4. Okay. Firstly, manganate ion is converted to per, per, uh, per manganate ion either by electrochemical or by disproportionation reaction. Okay. Here we have chromate, then the chromate is converted to sodium dichromate, then sodium dichromate to potassium dichromate. Very easy. This is very easy. Okay. Firstly, you have chromate ion, then that is converted to dichromate, then that is converted to potassium dichromate. Okay. Now here we have, firstly we have manganate ion that is converted to, uh, that is converted to per manganate ion by uh, electrochemical method or by disproportionation reaction. Now these two reactions of MnO4 are very most important. If you want to skip all the reactions, do these reactions at least. Okay. KMnO4 is a very good oxidizing agent. In case of, in the, these, these two reactions are, these are your 2019 P by Qs. That is why I am saying, if you want to skip this, but do not skip these eight reactions, okay? So now here we have, in case of basic solution, I negative is converted to, I negative is converted to IO3 negative. And in case of acidic solution, I negative is converted to I2. Okay, I negative is converted to I2. That is a main key point here. That in basic and acidic solution, we the uh, KMnO4 behave differently, right? And this is a K2Cr207 with Na2SO3 natural so far. It is going to give us chromium sulfate, right? Okay, bacha, understood this? <clears throat> Any problem? Any problem? Now, bacha, see this very carefully. Very carefully. Very important point. Very important point. Very, very important point. See this very carefully. You are the best. Okay. You are the best. You are worth it. You can do it. You are the best. You are worth it. You can do it. Repeat it yourself. Okay. After me. You are the best. You can do it and you are worth it. Yes. Okay, everyone. Yes. Now, everyone here, be relaxed. You have done everything with me. You have done everything. You have revised the whole syllabus of chemistry. Okay. You have revised that. Now, if you want to revise something more, you can revise the uh, reactions. Okay. Organic reactions. Everything else we have completed. Just relax now. Just relax. Eat something. Eat something healthy. Eat fruits. Prepare your mind. Okay. Uh, uh, pray to God that please uh, keep me calm. Okay. Talk to your parents. Talk to your family. Take a walk and relax now. Okay. Just relax. Because as I told you, just one month. There's just one month to success. That is that thing is one mantra to not to be anxious that mantra is that you must always see feel that yes i have given my hundred percent i am not in guilty i have given my hundred percent i am able to do this right now even if something happens in the exam hall that is not going to affect me because i have given my hundred percent here right when you have given your hundred percent now trust me on that Trust me on that. This is why life experiences I am talking. When you have given you 100% na, even if you pass or fail, that doesn't matter. Pass is just for the society. Marks are just for the society. When you have inner peace, when you know that I, the thing that I could do, I have done. Right? Right? I have studied day and night for this exam. Now your inner peace is like your inner consciousness is giving you that validity. Right? 
when your mind is giving you that validity you don't need external validation right you don't need external validation so just now relax your mind and repeat after me i have given my 100% i have given my 100% i will do best in the exam because i am the best i can do it i am worth it okay what are the five points first is i have given my 100% i will do the best in exam because i am worth it i can do it right and i deserve it yes bachcha okay everyone yes beta all the very best for your exam all the best for your exam all my uh, blessings are with you all uh, just relax you know just relax keep your mind calm uh, take a bottle with you you know drink don't drink too much otherwise you will have to use a washroom again and again don't drink too much water in the exam hall okay this is also few last minute tips for you last minute tips for you bachcha <clears throat> last minute tips for you first is relax your mind okay first is relax your mind second is neat paper okay not neat paper neat and clean paper okay neat and clean paper neat and clean third is make points make diagrams okay make points make diagrams like you have seen here i have always made everything in the points okay why because it is very easy to learn things in points and it is very easy for the examiner to check things in point okay make points make points of things draw diagrams or draw small flow charts small flow charts what kind of flow charts bachcha what kind of flow charts flow charts like this okay flow charts like this flow charts like this starch is made of amylose amylopectin that is having this linkage this linkage these kind of flow charts okay these kind of flow charts right okay next is when you are doing the cutting here when you are cutting something okay you have written uh, ribose here you have written ribose here you can cut it just by applying one line here. that's it you don't need to do this thing you don't need to do this thing bachcha this looks very dirty this looks like oh my god the examiner will get irritated right this is like messy right just apply but one line here that's it okay leave space between your answers right leave space between your answers okay if you you don't need to use so many pens and you know this and that you are not doing drawing paper this is not a art and craft paper right use one and use you can use pencil you can use pencil and one ball pen or gel pen what you, whatever you are comfortable with and always remember some students they hold the in in two years they are using ball pen 2 rupees pen 5 rupees pen i don't know why in exam hall they are using 50 rupees pen we will use parker we will use this pen we will use that pen bachcha use that pen that you are comfortable with okay that you are your hand is used to of writing okay always use that pen in the exam hall pick one pen pick one pen and use that pen for like i'm not saying that use only one pen pick one pen from any company okay one brand that you are comfortable writing with okay then use that pen that company pen for whole your exams right why this step because otherwise students get very difficult i have done that mistake you know for my uh, exam what i used to do otherwise i used to use very uh, you know uh, cheap pens at home but uh, when i used to go in exam i want to buy something like you know i want to buy a 50 or 60 rupees pen especially for your exam that would be very difficult for me to write down that so use that pen that you are comfortable with use a pencil there draw diagrams put the points there and just relax yourself okay bachcha okay yes okay all the very best my champions all the very best take care relax yourself stay hydrated eat something and take a nap for 20 to 30 minutes and then go for your examination all the best for the exam all my wishes all my blessings are with you take care okay bye bye take care see you see you after the exam okay see you after the exam and you can do it you will do it always remember this you deserve this you are worth it you can do it bye bye take care